Today I fucked up by trying to approach an older woman at the gym. I'm a virgin at 23 and would say I'm pretty desperate at this point. I've been working out for a while, and I'm terrible in social situations. I saw this woman looking at me after my workout when I was resting. I said, how are you doing? She said, okay sorry to disturb you. Then stood there for about three seconds. My sex drive shot up, so I thought about approaching her. I have never done anything like this. I was confident though. She was in her car and I approached her, yes I know, inappropriate, and said, hey how are you doing I think you're beautiful. Again, I know. She then said, okay, I'll tell my husband that you said that. I could have shit my pants. And I'm an old lady she continued. I apologized to her and walked back to my car where I'm at right now typing this while simultaneously wanting to jump off a roof. Too long did not read. I tried to approach an older lady at the gym as a socially awkward, virgin man in his 20s, I thought she was signaling me. Turns out I went about it the inappropriately and she was also married. Shoo. Approaching a woman at their car. Bruh you gotta first start figuring out how to take on the other person's perspective to see what is, isn't creepy. Because holy balls that is a terrifying level of engagement for most women. A dude following them out to their car after accidental eye contact. Some people just stare. I stare all the effing time at the gym because I'm half zoned out by the time I get to the gym after my workday. Don't be weird at a gym, people go there to exercise. But don't give up on putting yourself out there, just try more appropriate settings. You'll laugh at yourself later lol and it's not a big deal to be a 23 year old virgin, just saying. This is why adult co-ed sports or hobby type teams, bowling, darts, even bingo, are far better places to make new friends or find a potential partner than just the gym. People's minds wander at the gym. Sometimes I just glance at the people around me to give me a mental break from my workout which can result in awkwardly staring at someone too long. This is probably exactly what she was doing, and her first response was feeling awkward about realizing she was accidentally staring at you. It's okay to talk to someone in that situation, but keep it gym-relevant talk. I would say the foo was approaching someone at their car. Just don't do that. That's more than a little frightening for anyone, but especially for a woman by themselves in their own car. You need to chill out. Good on you for going to the gym, but definitely don't hit on people there. Having a quick look at your profile, you appear to be going through a tough time and you seem convinced it'll all change if only you could get laid. Work on yourself first. If you come across like a creep, you'll be known as a creep. Focus on you, and for the love of whatever god you like, have a fucking wank mate. Sheesh. Today I fucked up when I shared, fun facts, about me at work. Random throwaway. My girlfriend called me at work yesterday to tell me she was experiencing a panic attack. I asked where she was. She said she was stuck in traffic. I encouraged her to stop the car on the side of the road as soon as it was safe to proceed. In the meantime, I applied what she taught me to do if she had a panic attack, which was to distract her with random conversation. It was my first time interacting with someone having a panic attack. I had no idea what kind of random content would be appropriate for the conversation I was required to provide in such an intense situation, so I opted for, fun facts, about me. 1. My mental clock always wakes me up on time. 2. I still need to literally fall as an adult. 3. Spiders scare me. 4. I'm the tallest person in my family. 5. Every time I meet a pregnant woman, I think, now everyone knows you had sex. 6. I never wear hats. 7. My worst case scenario trick to lasting longer in bed is to imagine Ron Perlman and Danny DeVito making out naked. 8. I buried the teddy bear I used to fuck as a horny teenager in my parents' backyard because it eventually lost all its softness and I didn't want my mom and dad to ask awkward questions about the crusty bear. 9. There was number 9 because one of my coworkers interrupted me. I was on the toilet at work when my girlfriend called. I thought I had privacy because the men's room was empty when I entered, but then someone knocked on the door. The co-worker. Think Gen Z Nathan Fielder. I didn't know how much Nathan heard, but he must have heard enough because he asked if I was drunk. I said I was dealing with a personal emergency, which prompted him to ask if it was a mental health issue. I said I would explain later. My girlfriend was laughing on the phone. Nathan making me uncomfortable apparently made her panic attack go away. The good news. My girlfriend recovered. The bad news. Nathan knows too much about me now. TLRGF called me at work to tell me she was having a panic attack. 
I tried to distract her with fun facts about me. One of my co-workers overheard some of my not safe for work facts and now I'm on his radar for all the wrong reasons. As long as you don't get landed with Nathan as your secret Santa, and he gives you a teddy bear, I wouldn't worry too much. This is somehow sweet and funny and mortifying. You're a good guy, op. Now Nathan Fielder has a fun fact. I have a co-worker who lists fun facts about himself while he's shitting. What does number two mean? Still need to literally fall as an adult? Nathan needs to die. This information can never get out. Today I fucked up by telling a doctor to rot in hell. Over the weekend I was sitting in a pub with a couple friends. Out of the blue I get a text message from someone claiming to be a psychiatrist, following up on a referral from my GP. He says he has an opening for a virtual appointment on March 9th. Firstly that GP of mine retired a year ago. Secondly I never asked him for a new referral for a psychiatrist. I am diagnosed ADHD. Thirdly, why is a doctor texting me directly, rather than someone from their office, on a weekend, offering an appointment just a few days out? I respond and say, sorry, I didn't ask for a referral. He responds but saying in the future I should be more clear with my needs so it doesn't waste his time or my GP, who I shared retired over a year ago. I read this exchange out to my friends, because I was a bit baffled and annoyed by his response. One of my friends reminds me that there was a large medical data breach recently and he bets it is a scammer trying to get my details, or have me pay for a bogus appointment. Of course it is. That's the only explanation. I respond with the following. I don't appreciate the attitude. If you're going to be a successful scammer, pretending to be a doctor, you might want to pretend you have decent bedside manner. Fuck you scammer, rot in hell. This was on Saturday. This morning I call the office of the retired GP to ask what I should be aware of about a data breach, and to inform of them of this scammer. The receptionist asks for the name of the psychiatrist. I tell her the name the guy gave me. Oh, yes. Doctor, redacted. Sent that referral for you before he retired. It can take a while for psychiatrists to become available, because they are very busy. Well, shit. Too long did not read. I told a legit doctor who texted me to offer me an appointment to rot in hell, because I thought he was a scammer. Well you did fuck up, not by much, if a mental health professional tells you that you wasted their time because another doctor referred you to them without your consent then they are not good at their job and you probably dodged a bullet on that anyways. There were a lot of red flags. A text? In the weekend? By the doc himself? I'm sorry, but no. Not a chance. He should know better and you did the right thing. A referral response after a year? I'd still reply the same man shrugging. You should apologize and curse them out for such an absurd delay instead. I had a bit of a chuckle because you probably set some alarm bells with the psychiatrist. Alarm bells, dollar signs. Today I fucked up for falling for someone that has a family I didn't know about. I guess this has been a today I fucked up for the last year and a half, but I just found out these past couple days. I've been talking. Seeing this guy for almost two years now. I guess we were more of a situationship. And obviously I developed feelings for him, and he said he developed feelings for me. We talked every day and FaceTimed, we just got along really well. We talked about getting married and he said he wanted to have kids with me. I thought I could see myself with him for the rest of my life. Well, it turns out he recently had a baby with his wife. That I had no idea existed obviously. I couldn't believe it and I felt so betrayed even though I shouldn't, I'm not his wife. His wife didn't deserve this. I feel like a slimy person. It really made me depressed, both for me and what I thought could happen and for his wife. She deserves better. I've been ignoring his calls and texts and I just wanna hide forever, I've been sick to my stomach for days. Too long did not read. Fell in love with a man and didn't know he has a family. Tell the wife. She deserves to know. Cut your losses and move on. You can't control what's not in your control. Please let her know about this shit show. No one deserves to be lied to like that. What a fucking scumbag. Thank God you found out before stuff got even more serious. Not your fault. You've been lied to. So sorry you're going through this. It's not your fault. You didn't know. 